Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Minority Meals in Medicine podcast. Today, I have a special guest, a good friend of mine who I've happened to meet in undergrad at University of Maryland College Park, Toby Akande. He is a first year medical student at Eastern Virginia Medical School. And I'm so happy to have him on the podcast today because we actually had um, experiences in undergrad where we study together, study for the MCAT together. And I, now I'm so happy to see where he's at. And I want to hear about his experience after his first year of medical school. So Toby, welcome to the Men's Podcast. Today's podcast is sponsored by Mission to Medicine, a lifestyle brand that represents high achievers who are pursuing and actively living out their dreams of being healthcare professionals. Check out the latest merchandise online at www.missiontomedicine.com. Use discount code Mission to Medicine 10 to save 10% off your purchase. Thanks for having me, man. I'm super excited to finally be on here. Awesome. So let's get straight into it. So Toby, tell the people who you are. Who is Toby Akande? Where are you from? Um, what got you interested in medicine? And just give, give us your backstory a little bit about your family. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, my name is Toby Akande. Um, first year medical student at Eastern Virginia Medical School. Um, I am a Nigerian American um, from PG County, Maryland. Um, I went to University of Maryland College Park, graduated in 2019 with a degree in general biology. Um, and yeah, um, I, I've been interested in medicine since um, high school, actually around um, 10th, 11th grade is when I got interested in medicine. Um, and for me, it was like, it was pretty like simple. I kind of just like stumbled across it, honestly. Like it really started off like uh, just me like doing a random Google search on like internal medicine. And I was just like, wow, this kind of looks interesting. And like just little things began to build upon that. Like I started watching a specific, a specific show um, called NY Med. Um, and like, I know there's a lot of like fake um, medical shows out there, you know, Grey's Anatomy and all that. But this one specifically was um, a reality show that followed emergency medicine doctors at a hospital in New York. Um, so I offered this offer that like that piqued my interest. And I was like, wow, this, this looks really interesting. Like each episode just got me more interested. So then when I got to college, I immediately tried, started like shadowing in the ER my freshman year of college. And, you know, with those experiences, like seeing, seeing the impact the emergency medicine doctor had on each patient, because, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of patients that come into emergency room, they're like, they're, they're really like, you have like, you're, they're really going through it. Like they're, they're, they're seriously, they're, they're in a lot of pain. They're just going through different things and just seeing the way, you know, um, the doctor was able to take them from the, the immense pain they were in at the beginning of the um visit to like you know feeling better um by the end of it just that significant impact you're able to have i was like wow like this is something i can see myself doing so this is an environment i could see myself in as well so um that's kind of how it, how it started for me um yeah you said that that was a high school experience for you or that was yeah that was that was out in college um it okay. was the the what the whole show and everything that started in high school but then it was in college they're like i actually got myself in the in the emergency room and actually got to see it for myself. I'm curious, did you have any um, clinical experience in high school? Did you ever step foot in a um, hospital in high school at all or? No, I had never stepped foot in a hospital. It was, it, it was all just like, just from like watching things. But you know, once I got to college freshman year, I didn't waste time, like winter break, I was, I was shadowing. I didn't waste any time at all in college. <laughs> so freshman year, you was already on. So when you came in, you already knew straight ahead, like pre-med is the route that you wanted to go. And you started actively yep. taking steps to go in that direction. Okay, so yep, tell I, us a little I was ready. Tell us a little bit about your pre-med undergrad experience. Um, far as like, I guess, freshman year, starting to take, the, did you start taking those bio classes? Maybe not so much the pre, pre-med classes, like, you know, the, the medical school ones. I, yeah. But how was that experience for you? Um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was a journey. Um, pre-med, pre-med courses. Um, I started, I started my pre-med courses my second semester. Um, that's when mm-hmm. I started taking, um, you know, introductory biology classes, you know, Chem 1, um, mm-hmm. Calculus, all that was my spring semester. So, 
Um, but I, I'd say it started off pretty well, honestly. Like, it, those classes, those introductory classes went well for me. Um, it was, you know, sophomore year when, like, it began to really pile up. You know, we got to, like, the Orgo 2s and the, the genetics and the physics. Um, that's when, like, I was, that's when I really started to go through it. That's when, like, life got pretty hard because um, it just seemed like there was just, I was trying to, you know, get through all this, all, all this science work while also trying to do like the extra curricular activities. Um, and it just was so time consuming. <laughs> it was, it, remember, it really got, go ahead. I remember when you came on to um, the Mission to Medicine YouTube page, my YouTube page, and yeah. um, you were on the panel and you were speak. you spoke about um, how you were juggling, you know, the extracurriculars and then also yeah. taking a heavy course load. You took like a really heavy course load among doing extracurriculars. So what advice yeah. would you give now your older self in medical school, looking back, what would you advise current pre-meds or people who are pre planning to become pre-med for as like how to maneuver credit loads, extracurriculars, et cetera, in undergrad? Um, I mean, my advice, man, is to take your time, really take your time. Like, there's no point in, like, piling, piling up a whole bunch of um, pre-med courses and then trying to do all the extra extracurriculars out there. Like, you really want to spread things out um, and, and do a few things and be really good at that. Because, I mean, I'm talking about how hard sophomore year was, but sophomore year was only hard because I was trying to do everything at the same time i was trying to do all the extracurriculars and i was trying to do all the science classes and it just it just didn't it just wasn't good and i remember that youtube video it was in that youtube video i was like man sleep is temporary gpa is forever like <laughs> i mean i still i still kind of believe that but it's like the like you don't have to lose all that sleep like if you plan yourself better like there's no like I, and you know it's like because we all like you know at the beginning we all just want to like go straight through and you know, not take a gap year. So we want to get everything done. But it's like you really like. There's nothing wrong with a gap year. Um, so there's no there's no reason to like pile everything on. It's, so my advice is just take your time and spread things out, and you know, be effective or little. Awesome, thank you. Um, and you mentioned a little bit about physics, biochem, those upper advanced level, you know, pre med coursework that presented some challenges to you. So, what strategies or ways did you try to overcome those challenges that came about in undergrad? Um, I just, you know, I I really valued um, group work. Um, I think that's what really helped me. Um, like for example, physics, physics was hard. Um, but I would just always like find, you know, find friends in the class that, like I could work with um, to, you know, let's figure out the assignment together. Let's, you know, let's go to office hours together. I was in office hours every week, always trying to like figure out, you know, figure out the, the assignments we had to do. And, you know, I would like, then I would like meet up with my, meet up with my classmates and we would like, you know, try and discuss, discuss things and, you know, put our heads together. So honestly, like, I don't know where I would be if, if not for like, you know, prioritizing, like meeting up with people to really discuss things and figure things out. Um, I think that was one of the, the most helpful things for me um, in dealing with difficult classes, just finding help. Nice, thank you. And then so with the the pursuit of trying to find classmates and building those connections that were poor with individuals like that, how did you go about fostering that, that type of that friendship or that camaraderie to have group studies? Were these formal group studies or did you actively seek people out in the class that you possibly could get along with and study together? How did that work for you? Yeah, they they weren't formal at all. Like they were just like you know me, just like just like seeking people out in class. You know, seeing people I could relate with, um, seeing people I have similarities with, and you know, just um, build a relationship with them. Um, and and seeing it like okay we we have things in common and you know let's stick together and help each other out um, and and you know UMD like a lot of the, you see a lot of the same people in, in each class so it's like every class I would like be in and I would see the same people from previous years so like we just like kind of just stuck together um, and made it work. Awesome. I think looking back now, I'm thinking the reason why you and I got kind of got along is that we both had like this natural instinct or inkling to be leaders on campus and and to know how to navigate the campus scene. 
and in our respective organizations and clubs and stuff that we participated in. Yeah. Um, so as a leader on campus and undergrad, how did you manage your responsibilities? Tell us about how you got your, your um, leadership position first and then how you ended up um, managing that with your academics. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I just, I just shot my shot, honestly. Like I, you know, I started getting leadership positions um, freshman year of college. Um, I remember I became like community service chair for the um, the pre med the pre medical society, and honestly, like I remember like one of my friends was like, "Why are you even like Why are you even applying for this position? Like you're just a freshman, like <laughs> you don't even know anybody." But I was like, "I mean, I'm just gonna shoot my shot and see what happens." And you know, I I ran for the position and I got it. Um, same thing, like, and then from then I was able to become president of the organization after a year a year after that so it's like you know just putting myself in the in the right position and just like going for it like you can you can like think about things too hard and think you're unqualified and stuff like that but like you know I just went for things and it worked out for me um and yeah it just I mean for me like you know it's, you, it could be like hard like having you know present or something while having to do all your schoolwork but like for me like that was also like my like it helped motivate me because it's like that this is what I'm interested in. Like I'm interested in, you know, medicine. So it's like being able to be a part of an organization that like, you know, I was passionate about. Um, it kind of like just made being in school better for me. You know, through that organization, I was able to like network with doctors. I was able to meet so many different doctors. I was able to meet so many pre-medical students and, you know, even be able to help them out. Um, so for me, like it just made the experience better. Um, and it motivated me like to go back home and like do like do my best with, with all the different classes I was in. Um, so that's how it worked out for me. Awesome. I know as pre-med students in undergrad, it's a lot of pressure to perform, to be involved. And then you got to, you know, get ready for standardized tests. And you know, we all know the big elephant in the room um, when it comes to the pre-med route, trying to matriculate to med school. Everyone has to take the MCAT. So how did that experience go for you? And how did you prepare for that? And did you take any gap years? And if so, what did you do during your gap year? Yeah, um, so I took one gap year. So um, I was a scribe. I worked in the emergency room um, during my one gap year. Um, so basically because I knew I was gonna take the gap year, I um, planned to, t I started studying for my um, MCAT senior year of college. Um, around I think I started starting winter break yeah winter break of senior year um and I took my MCAT in April for the first time um and I didn't I didn't do well <laughs> that's just what happened I, I studied a lot over winter break but it was pretty hard to be able to you know balance studying for the MCAT while like taking all like I think I was taking all science classes in that my last semester so that was hard, like, focusing on the science classes while also studying for the MCAT. That was super hard. So I'm not too surprised, looking back, I'm not too surprised that it didn't work out for me, honestly. Um, but I mean, the MCAT is just a super hard test, man. And, like, at the end of the day, the, it just requires time. Um, like, you're not going to do well on it if you don't have the time to commit to it. Um, so after I took it the first time, um, I didn't do well. Um, I just decided I can just take it again. Um, so I just started studying in June, um, start June, July, I, that was my main focus, you know, I graduated in May, so it's like I had time, so summertime, I had time, I was just spending my entire day studying, studying for the test, um, and then I ended up taking it in August, um, August 9th of that year, and, you know, it, it, it seemed like, you know, I was taking it late, like, you know, they tell you, get your application in, in June, but I mean, I, I just did what I had to do and I took it in August. The court came out in September, put my application in um, and, you know, ended up working out for me. Awesome. And the thing is, like, a lot of people get discouraged after that first attempt and it maybe didn't work out. How did you persevere through all of that? Because usually, like, you know, if you see that score, you start self-doubt self -doubt, and the imposter syndrome starts to kick in and you're like, am I really, mm -hmm. like it out for this how did you get over yeah. that um negative those negative thoughts if you had them yeah um yeah i was yeah i, I was discouraged man i was i was pretty discouraged um but man, shout out to 
Shout out to Nick, man, from the pre health office at UMD. Shout out to him, man. Cause I, I remember I walked up into his office. I was like, man, this is my score. I didn't do well. <laughs> I'm like, what am I going to do now? <laughs> But he was just super calm, man. He was super calm, super encouraging. And he just told me, like, just going to take it again. And he was like, yeah, you can take it in August and you could still apply for this cycle. Um, so just even just being able to sit in front of him and, like, just how calm he was and, you know, just him just encouraging me and telling me that I could do this again and, you know, I should take the time I need um, and just prepare again. Um, that was super helpful. And also just knowing that, like, this is, like, this is what I want to do. Like, this is what I want to do. Anything good that you want to do, you're going to experience the challenges. You're going to experience setbacks and obstacles. So it's like, I knew, like, this was just all part of the journey. Um, and I wasn't about to give up off this one one bad test after all the work I put in for the past four years. So I um, just had to, you know, get my mindset right. You know, have this have faith and just believe you're like, you know, I, could, I can still do this thing. Um, and that's what I did. And, uh, and it worked out. Well said, well said. He gave a shout out to Nick Celadon. He's our pre health advisor at um, UMD. Yes, sir. Uh, contrary to a lot of people, a lot of people have maybe not so many pleasant things to say in general about pre med advisors. Um, but I definitely had a great experience and positive experience with the ones at our school. And Toby just gave his testimony about his experience too. And it was also positive. So that's good. That's good to know. Um, as far as your transition now, so now Toby is a big boy. He's, he's, he's gone out of UMD. He's now at Eastern Virginia Medical School. So he just finished up his first year. And I know it had to have been a challenge or it, you had to face some challenges or it was a different experience from undergrad. So tell us a little bit about um, what that transition was like um, as you first started in the fall of um, 2020. Yeah, um, med school is pretty different from college. Um, I mean, also just the fact that, like, I mean, I started med school in the pandemic. So just even that aspect of, like, starting school, coming to a new state, new place, and everything being, most things being virtual, um, that was just, you know, a challenge of its own, being able to figure out how, like, I was going to, like, be able to learn just solely virtual and not being able to go to class um that was that was a challenge um but once i'm i'm pretty grateful for the way my school did things because we, we still had a lot of in-person things in terms of we had anatomy lab in person we had ultrasound lab in person we had clinical skills in person so you know everything that was needed to be in person we had it but you know all our lectures were virtual so for me those in-person things helped because like those things made us feel like I was still a med school. <laughs> like it made, I, it made me, you know, it provided the motivation I needed um, while I was still trying to like work through um, virtual, the whole virtual environment. Um, but honestly, the truth is I honestly like the setup of med school over college. I mean, first, because like you're finally learning things that, you know, that, that you feel like really matter towards your career. Um, but also, like, at UVMS, like, we, we take, like, one class at a time, like, and, you know, in college, you know, you're taking 18 credits, whatever, 20 credits, um, but, like, here, literally one class at a time, like, I started off in the fall, like, taking just anatomy, um, and that's what I focused on, so it was pretty cool being able to just focus on one thing, you know, then move on to foundational science, move on to general mechanism of disease, and just focus on that thing entirely. Um, we have like, of course, we have like multiple lectures in one day, but it's like you're focusing on one overall topic. Um, so that made it really, that made it, um, that, that's, that's why I liked it. And also, of course, we had a pass fail system. So that also, you know, took, in, in college, that's just what everyone is stressed about. Like, oh, I got to have a 4.0. Like, I got to get into med school. I got to have a 4.0. Um, but here it's like, okay, you just have to pass. But even though it's past those, like, because we're all like, you know, we're all medical students and we all want to be excellent. Like we're still pushing for the best. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I honestly just really like the system of medical school over over college. And I really enjoyed, you know, the just, I really just enjoyed the, the this past year and the things I've been able to learn. That's, that's good. I feel like a lot of um, medical schools are starting to now adopt the pass or fail system. So a lot of yeah. new pre-meds have that to look forward to down the road once they matriculate to med school. 
Um, you mentioned a couple big names of uh, courses that you took to, um, this past year, um, some, yeah. some heavy science classes. Um, which one of those did you enjoy the most and which one did you find the most challenging? And why? Hmm. Um, I'd say anatomy was probably the most challenging. Um, not, I mean, I guess probably also because I was the first class I took. So just trying to figure out, you know, I mean, just trying to figure out what's the best way to study um, in med school. Like there's so many different techniques and I just like was so confused as to what is the best way to study. But also anatomy is just hard in that there is just so many details. Like I remember like just being in anatomy lab and it's like there's so many different um, nerves that connect to different muscles. And it's like, it's just so hard being able to like having to remember every single thing. Um, like I remember even like a little your first year of school, I was I had lab and I had to do a back dissection. I was just like, oh my gosh, like I have to cut open a back and like um and just like having to know how how to dissect the back and how to like, you know, just avoid, you know, avoid, you know, messing it up. Um and just like, you know, the the back ended up being like the most easy easiest part. Like each each week we were getting more and more detail, more and more specific. So um, just for me, just being, having to remember all the details of anatomy was hard. Um, but, you know, I, I enjoyed, um, I definitely enjoyed general mechanisms of disease, which was the first um, class we took this spring semester. And for me, it was just because, like, that was, I feel like that's when we really got into learning about diseases. Like, that's the name of the class, general mechanisms of disease. So it's like, I really, like, felt like, I was in med school at that point. Like, I really felt like, man, I'm learning doctor things because we're learning about different diseases. We're learning about, you know, how it happens. We're learning about the different treatments. Um, so, like, that just was super interesting for me, super fun, and it was, you know, just easier to remember. Um, so that's why I really enjoyed it. That's unique because, like, in undergrad, you know, you have to learn everything. You have to do the things that fit in your major, the things that's going to get you to complete all the requirements and the benchmarks for your major that may not be yeah. something that you're actually interested in. But when you get to med yeah. school, most of the classes are very pertinent and you know why you're exactly. actually learning that information. So I can exactly. see, I can definitely relate and understand what you're, what you're talking about there. Um, in regards to um, how you structured your your um housing and like your living situation as far as like med school you live with classmates right or you live yeah. by yourself yeah. how was that I live with classmates. how was that, that experience mm -hmm. it's it's been great honestly i i feel like i really got blessed with a great setup so i live in a i live in a townhouse with um two of my classmates um and it's super clutch because like we're literally like a four minute walk from campus um and it's just like it's just been you know we just have a really spacious and nice place um and it's just really cool to be able to live with like people in your class like like i love that to just walk out of my room and just walk downstairs and like i can start you know just at, start talking to my roommate about like whatever we're whatever it is we're learning in class and like we just be able to like start discussing things and you know helping each other out and explain things to each other so like that's been pretty helpful and, like they're just super cool guys like we've been able to like relate very well and just have fun together and you know just that's that's honestly one thing one reason why i've enjoyed this year just being able to you know, live in a peaceful house with people who you enjoy living with awesome and as it pertains to your classmates i know it's covid so it probably was a little difficult at first to probably start building relationships and friendships with them but has that evolved over the year um with you getting more closer with your classmates who don't who you don't live with yeah yeah it was yeah it was pretty hard um at the beginning of the year because there was you know, you know there was you know the pandemic was worse back then um and you know they were really emphasizing not you know not having not meeting up in person for different things um but you know as the year got as the year progressed and you know the pandemic became you know the vaccinations came out you know as people got vaccinated um uh, people you know we began to get more and more comfortable just you know meeting up in you know small groups and hanging out um and for me like i'm pretty into sports so it's like i've been able to meet a lot of classmates who like you know playing soccer playing basketball i've met a lot of different um classmates and be able to make friends with them 
Um, so I, there's still a lot of people I haven't met in my class, honestly. Um, but I have met a good amount. Um, and, you know, I can say that, I, you know, I, I'm in a pretty good class. With a lot of very cool people, a lot of the nice people that I've been able to relate with. So pretty good for my class. Um, how large is the class size over there? It's 151 people. Okay. It's a pretty large class size on the larger side. Yeah. Um, as it, as it pertains to your studying habits and the thing, the, the studies, the studying tools that you use, are you a big proponent of Anki? And if so, how do you use that within your study system? Oh, yes. I am an Anki guy, man. Anki is absolutely amazing. I really wish I utilized it in college, honestly, because Anki really, really helps um, in, like, being able to retain information. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've been using Anki all year. Um, that's my main study technique. And I, I just, like, downloaded the pre-made Anking deck um so i've just been using that with each class um just unlocking different cards and um for me it's been i've just been trying anki is always there but i've been trying you know different study techniques throughout the year in terms of like you know watching lecture not watching lecture or you know just maybe just reading the slides and you know figuring out which you know secondary um resources i want to use in terms of boards and beyond reading the first aid book um, so each, honestly, I feel like each class was different. Um, I tried a different technique with each class to try to figure out what the most effective way is. But I definitely really enjoy using the, um, the secondary resources like Boys and Beyond um, because it really focuses on the high yield material. And I felt like, you know, whether or not I watched lecture, like that really helped me the most in terms of, you know, figuring out what is high yield and what is the, what is the information I really need to remember for my exams and for step one. Awesome. So you're like, you're getting the both the best of both worlds with preparing for step, but also getting your in-house lectures covered with that information at the same time. And then using Anki to exactly. help you too. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I know med school is very stressful at times, information overload. Um, how, or at least that's what they say. How have you been able to balance or manage um, that as a student? Um, I know you mentioned that you, you meet up with some of your classmates and you play ball and, you know, you get up and play catch up. But how, like what other um, ways do you try to manage your stress? Um, I, I started going to the gym. That's been, that's been pretty helpful. Um, I, you know, first semester I was like, man, is this too much work to do? Like, I don't have time to go to the gym. Um, but then I started realizing that like a lot of my classes were going to the gym and I was like, man, if they can make time for the gym, like what, what am I talking about? Um, so I, I got a membership this spring semester and that's been very helpful. Um, and like what I've realized, something I'm realizing is about med school is that, like it's super busy, super stressful year, but like you're still able to make time for the things you want to make time for. So I decided, okay, I'm going to make time for the gym and now like, I've been going consistently every every week, and it's like honestly, it also helped me to be more effective in my studying because I know okay, at this time I'm going to the gym, so I need to be as effective as possible up until this time. Um, so that's been working out for me recently, and it's been I've been really enjoying going to the gym, and it's, it's been an opportunity for me to you know, just get away from studying and and just go and just get a good workout in, um, but also just you know hanging out, hanging out with some friends, you know over. The weekend just you know saying okay i'm gonna take a break from from studying friday night saturday night and just like you know meet up with friends you know in a small group and safe environments and you know just just hanging out and relaxing um there's a lot of things that are still possible in med school even though we're super busy right that's good all right so you mentioned a little bit about balancing your time and um incorporating the gym into your schedule so can you just give us like a typical day of Toby? Like what, what is your day, typical day like? Okay. Um, honestly, uh, it was, it was different each for each class, different each semester. Um, but, you know, I could talk about, you know, it's mostly clean in the spring. Um, for me, I would, you know, wake up every morning. Um, I wake up at 8 a.m. Now some people wake up earlier than that, but I chose to, and that's the benefit of virtual lectures and, you know, being able to start with, whenever you want. Like, I, I was able to pick my, I pick, I wake up at 8 a.m. Every, every day, you know, I start, I start more morning, you know, 
I get my devotional and my prayer in, and I go go into I go into Anki. Um, Anki is always the first thing I do. I have to do your reviews each day because I know if I don't get it done in the morning, I might not get it done at all. So start start with get the get the um the reviews in, and then then um I start watching um my boys and beyond videos, um watch the sketchy videos, and then do all the new cards for the videos I watch. Um, and just like do that throughout the throughout the day, and if if I have a, I may have you know a clinical skills to do for like you know one hour, so I head over to campus, do clinical skills, come back, keep watching more boards and beyond videos, um, and then around seven o'clock, go hit the gym um, for, about, for about an hour, and you know come back, eat, and continue 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 to work keep watching whatever videos i have to watch um and then you know i usually go i usually go to bed around around midnight um but yeah just that constant cycle of just watching more videos um doing more anki cards and then until until uh, until i finish until i finish all of them for the weekend then i just like start reviewing all the content i've gone over um and just like trying to get as many uh, the goal is always to get multiple passes over the information um so i can so you can solidify it in your in your head um so yeah that's, just, that's how i did it nice is there a system that you use to keep track of how many passes you've already done over the information like do you tally it mark it or anything to keep track yeah um i did that for a little bit but i just I just wasn't able to like just stick with that. I tried making the whole Excel sheet and keeping track, um, but so yeah, I, I don't keep track of how many passes I have. I just know that I have to have multiple passes, um, and I and I use Boards and Beyond and Pathoma and Sketchy, so I like I know like I have to get through all those videos. So all those videos are giving me my um my multiple passes and you know looking at doing the Anki cards is also giving me my multiple my multiple passes and then at the end of the day before the exams i make sure to look over um the lecture slides as well um so yeah, even without keeping track specifically i just know that like i'm getting the multiple passes that i need that makes sense that makes sense because like Anki space repetition, and then you're watching the videos yeah. multiple times, or whatever. So you're, you're seeing yeah. it more than once. Yeah. Do you incorporate practice questions? Because you didn't really mention practice questions. Oh How yeah. Do you into your uh, study system. Yes, yes. Actually, I forgot. Yeah, practice questions are essential. Like you need practice questions. Like um, I do, I do U World. So that's one good thing about EVMS that they give you. Um, they give us a two year free subscription to U World. Um, so for me, I always make sure to get to U World um, because those are the closest. Because we have our exams are old set questions, so doing U World questions is the best practice to prepare for our exams. So I always make sure to do U World questions like um, right before my exams. So the weekend before, or like the week of, I make sure to after I've gone over all the content, I do my U World questions um, to make sure I'm ready for exams. Nice. I know typically some students, um, when they get really in the midst of studying for school and exam season's picking up, they take social media hiatuses. Um, did you at all take a break from social media while you're in med school to focus in on school? And if so, how did that go? If not, if you're able to balance it, explain how you, you do that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I have done that at times where I've just like deleted Instagram just to like completely focus. Um, but most times I don't delete it. Um, I just like, I just kind of like, I just am a person who does everything in moderation. So I'm just like, literally I'm just able to have self-control <laughs> and I just like, I don't, I'm not one to like go on social media too much. You know, when I know I need to, I need to grind, you know, I put my phone down and I just like, I grind um, and I, I know like, okay, after I've done a certain amount of work, then okay, now I can look at my phone. Um, but while I'm while I'm watching a video, while I'm doing these practice questions, I need to focus for a specific amount of time. Um, and that's just the way I've been able to do it and it's worked out for me. Okay. This year has been a lot, man. Like this year as it pertains to like this past year with the COVID, the pandemic, um, just seeing 
injustices occur, especially in the African American community with police brutality, et cetera, um, a lot of things have came to light. Um, and you know, in medicine, we have health disparities that are pretty prevalent and a lot of communities are affected. Are there any health disparities or issues within healthcare that you want to tackle as a future physician? And what ways are you trying to like, you know, get yourself ready to work in those issues, work in those areas to help solve them? Yeah, honestly, yeah, that's, that's, that's one reason I'm grateful to be at UVMS because that, that's something the school prioritizes, just like having like being a school that like focuses on the community and focuses on disparities. Um, so the one, one thing I've been involved in here is our student clinic. Um, our student clinic sees um, patients that don't have insurance, patients that aren't able to afford um, medical care on their own. Um, and that's, I've been super involved in that. Um, I'm on the, I'm on the lab team. I'm on the community outreach team. And I really, I'm the leader of the community outreach team actually. And that's something I've enjoyed because our focus is literally making sure that people in the community know that this resource is available. Um, so we, we're always like, you know, in conversations with different community leaders, um, different, you know, shelters, different churches, different, um, just. Um, nonprofit organizations trying to make sure that every every like all their members and all the people in the community know like this um, that this clinic is available for them. And then also, you know, that's that's something I do. But I also get to participate in the clinic um, as a you know as a first year student. We're able to participate in the actual treat, like being able to see the patient and um, you know talk to the patient. Do you like get a history, get a physical exam, and participate in the in the whole process of um, the treatment that they go through. Um, so that's been, that's been a great way to even practice what I've been learning in, in class, um, but also, you know, doing what I'm passionate about, which is, you know, being able to provide care for those who need it the most. And the fact that like, I've been able to do that here, it, it's basically preparing me to be able to continue to do that even after medical school is over, um, which is something I am um, very confident that I'll, I'll be spending my time doing. Wonderful. I know it's a little bit early on in your career and your medical journey, um, but do you have an idea about what specialty or specialties you're interested in? Yeah, I'm interested in emergency medicine. Um, and honestly, I've been interested in emergency medicine since high school and it still stayed the same. I, I really enjoyed, um, I really enjoyed scribing in the, in the ED during my gap year and I've been you know, I've been able to shadow a little bit um, during my first year, um, and I plan to get a, get a lot more experience um, this summer. Also, in the emergency room, just to be, you know, further find it. Like this is something. Key. Um, so for me, it's emergency medicine, but I'm definitely open minded. Like I, I look forward to you know rotations, being able to see all the other stuff. And for that, I plan to shadow their specialties as I, as I get the opportunity to um, this summer and during second year. Um, so right now it's emergency medicine, but you know, I'm definitely open to change. That's good. That's good. I feel like a lot of people go in thinking one thing and then they, they are really strong on it, but then when they get further along, get into clinicals and get on the wards, they're like, oh, I love yeah. everything. I, know. I really don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, in due time, you will figure that out. Um, you yeah. mentioned already that you're a big sports fan. Um, so this is like the question I like to ask at the end. Like post COVID, which we're kind of technically in now because everyone's supposed to be getting vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so post COVID, you're a big sports fan. Which game would you like to go to and attend first? Man, I gotta, I gotta go see the Lakers, man. Like literally, the pandemic started in March last year, and I was, I was, the, the Lakers were coming to DC that same at the end of March last year, <laughs> and I was planning to go to that game. I wanted to see LeBron. I wanted to see AD live for the <laughs> first time. So I was pretty, I was pretty disappointed. They're like, I couldn't see that game. So. Once, once you know, I get the opportunity to like, I definitely want to watch the Lakers play. Hopefully, them coming to DC. Um, I want to see LeBron in person, see AD in person, and 
uh, definitely enjoy that experience. That's I know you're going to wild too. out. <laughs> you're going to yes, wild sir. out. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Toby Akande. Thank you, Toby, for so much for coming on to the Men Podcast. I know you had an extraordinary year. You definitely talked about a lot of great things about your experience from undergrad and your new experience in med school. I wish you nothing but the best in your next coming M2 year, but please enjoy this summer the best that you can. I know pretty much after this is just game time. I'm trying to work to get into your specialty, but take the self-care breaks that you need to get in. But thank you again, Toby, for coming on. Until the next podcast, peace out. Thank you.